we make a start like that and then if people come late they come late so um first i will share my screen Lovely. Is it shared with you? Oh, I don't see it here. People have messed up with the, <laughs> with the settings. It's okay. If you see it, that's, that's the best. That's the most important. Beautiful picture. Okay. Sorry? A lovely picture. <laughs> Thank So there's, there's a terminal here. Um, you can see what I type. Is it big enough? Okay, good. Okay, we'll wait for... Hello! So we were just starting, so we'll wait for you to make sure you're all set to get started again. Okay. So I was saying, so that's just my terminal here. And what we need um, is a tutorial. So, as I said last week, Wolf has an online tutorial, and this week we're just going through the first case study of the tutorial to see how um, it works. So, when you go to the web and go to the Wolf tutorial, you arrive on the welcome page. It tells you a lot of different things. Um, I don't think I really ever read the introduction, so I can't tell you whether you should read it or not, sorry. Um, definitely skip the compilation. Um, as I said last week, it won't help you. Um, you can look at the basics. We're not going to do it today. It's just presenting you a bit more about all the different steps. Um, there is, if you want, this can be of interest, the test your input data. Uh, if you click on it, it will get you to here, which isn't very useful, this one, but there's a link here to the static data collection for WPS uh, with a whole table of the different uh, data. Here, there is not a lot of um, description of the data itself. Um, I'm not sure where is the description of the data itself. I've never really looked into it because most of the time I just do tests. I don't really care about what the data is. Um, but at least it gives you an idea of what type of data you have and the different um, resolution you can, you can have all the data. I just want to say we have definitely all the um, required data, which is this table. We don't, I don't think we necessarily have all the data for specific applications because they, there's always some new ones depending on new um, models that are in the WOLF uh, code. So if you happen to want to use something that is not there, let me know. We can always add to it. Uh, make also look that some are just US only, which means they only cover the continental US. So uh, if you're looking at Australia, it won't help you. And uh, there is additional optional um, data, which some we have, some we don't depending on, again, um, historic reasons, people who have used it or not. So, but again, if you need it, um, don't hesitate to ask for it. Okay. okay. So, go back to the tutorial. Um, okay, where you learn, where you go step by step through setting up uh, a case is on the case studies. I uh, have a presentation of the different cases here, um, tells you what they are. Uh, today we're going to do the default case. So, okay. So this case is in January 2000, it's typically a 
what is it, a winter storm on the east coast of the US. Um, so it's a very short run, it's like one day of run, so very short, obviously. And um, that's the domain um, that's going to be used. So it has a coastline, legs, and etc. Okay. So the first thing to do is to set up the model domain. It's always the first step to do, set up the domain. Okay, so it says here, ensure that you have the terrestrial data somewhere on your computer. It's on margin, so you're good. And okay, it tells you to go to the WPS directory and then edit the name list file. Actually, I'm going to present this differently because otherwise it's going to be a pain to always switch. I'm going to put this here and put the, this should be easier to follow. Okay, so I'm in the wolf um, directory that I've um, cloned from GitHub. I have compiled because as I told you, it's, it takes forever to compile. And so we are ready to start. So going first to WPS, um, that's all the files that are there. After compilation, you see you have the .xd files that appear. Um, first thing to do is to edit the name list WPS. And it tells you what should be there. So what we want is max DOM. Max DOM is the number of domains for your simulation. So if you just have one domain, it's one. Uh, and if you have nest inside, it's uh, obviously more than one. Uh, in this case, we just use one. And then it tells you to give the path to the WPS Georg. Um, there's a note here. Um, it's mainly for those who use Wolf. There, there was a big change between Wolf version 4 and previous version 3 uh, Wolf. So it just uh, for people who have used Wolf version 3 and want to um, reproduce the same uh, runs with Wolf version 4. You can leave it there, it doesn't matter. Okay, and what you need to put is the geo data path here. And on margin, it's projects wolf data. Oh, I'm forgetting something, I think. Um, So it's project wolf data WPS here. Okay, and that's all you need to do for running, um, for creating uh, the domain. So, um, oh no, and after it tells you to make sure that you also need obviously to specify the domain. And so you need to make sure the name list domain is right. Uh, it is right by default. Um, I'll let you figure out, look at the documentation to know what the name list names mean. Um, it typically says it has 74 points in east-west direction, 61 is in north-south. Um, that's the resolution in meters, I believe, with Lambert. And um, that's a projection, and that's how it sets the grid for you. So, but you can read through um, all this in the documentation. Okay, so it's all good. Okay, so the advantage of running through the tutorial is that it also gives you all the nice wolf. Also comes with a lot of utilities additional to the code to check your inputs and 
your outputs and stuff like that. So running through the tutorial will give you a lot of those and tell you how to use them. So you see you have an NCL one that you can use. So we're going to load NCL. And we're going to do what the tutorial says. And when we do that, it tells us there's a problem. <laughs> it's still stopping now. Um, if you read this, it tells you you need Nancyl v6.1, we have v6.4.0. And in fact, there is a plotgrid new dot NCL. So um, that's a problem in the tutorials. They should have put it, but they haven't yet. So, um, but you just add the new, new, and then it works. And you can see, so the plotgrid new dot NCL will read the info from the name list dot WPS and plot a nice map for you of what your domain will look like. So you can quickly see whether that's the domain you want or not um, before running all the wolf stuff. Um, that's a lot faster. OK, so we have the right domain. Now let's run GeoGrid to create a grid and the geographical data. Um, we'll discuss later what can be run on the, I'll summarize later what can be run on the login nodes and what can't. In general, the first steps of WPS are relatively fast and can be run on the login nodes, especially GeoGrid. Uh, but the last steps like MedGrid, Real.exe and Wolf.exe usually needs to be run on the queue. Um, for the tutorial, there's only wolf.exe that needs to be run on the queues because that's a small um, case. But for a real case, usually, yeah, you have to run more on the queue. Okay, so the grid is doing its thing. So it tells you at the end um, there are option, optional fields that haven't been processed. We don't have these fields. I believe the, all of these are only available on um, continental US. So that's one of the reasons we don't have them, but they could be uh, processed. OK. And so this should create this netcdf file, geo underscore em dot dz one dot c. So let's see. Yeah, this was created there. Uh, so we're good. And that's an etcdf file. So um, to check what you need, you just use ncview or ncdump. Um, but ncview can be easier. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in it. An easy one can, to interpret is a landmark. You can see we have the US, so the C. It looks pretty good. Um, yeah, as I told you about before, there's a map fact uh, for map factor. This should be around one. We see that here the range is between 0 0.96 and 1.02. So the projection works well for this uh, for this part of the world. Um, okay. And then uh, I'll let you check what there is in the file if you want. But that's it. Uh, the other thing with the tutorial, um, it gives you access to the files that are normally generated by the tutorial. So if you want to compare, make sure you have it right. You can always download the file and compare with what you have produced. Um, OK, the second step is to get meteorological data. OK, so for this case, we have grip data sets. 
Uh, so it tells you how to get the data. The data is already on NCI, so do not download it again. It's not very big, but it's not worth it. And the data is here. Projects of data January 2000 version 4. Okay. Uh, there is also a January 2000. Uh, that's an old version of the case of the files. So, yeah, use the version 4 if you're using version 4. Um, I'm pretty sure you remember my email. Uh, Project Wolf will disappear on Gadi, so it will be um, GData SX70, I think, uh, Wolf instead of Project Wolf. But that's the rest will be the same. Okay, so here it, again it gives you a utility that you can use to check your um, grip data. So that's util g1 print.exe and the path is this one. And we're going to use whichever of those. Okay, and it prints a lot of stuff to you in front of you. If you have not used grip, that grip format before, you might not understand everything, but typically it gives you the name of the variable. You can see HGT for height, temperature, stuff like that. Uh, for each variable, uh, appears several times because it appears for each level that is in the file and gives you the time in the file. So. So you can see what's in the, in the file. Okay. So importantly, before um, WPS can understand your data, it needs what is called variable tables because grip is not self-describing. So you need to um, you need an additional file uh, that will describe the data for for you and. Um, the PPS comes with quite a lot of them. They are under the PPS and grid variable tables. Oh, you have the path here anyway. Um, so you see they come for different type of meteorological data. You have error in theory, you have, uh, I don't know, a lot of them that I don't know. Um, so you see that there are some for the, so the UKMO and game, for example, is uh, the UM. So you can force uh, work with UM outputs if you want to, and so on. So it tells us in this case we're using data from GFS archive, so we need to have the vtable GFS, and. This needs to be linked with the name Vtable, nothing else, or in the directory where you're going to run um, and grip. So we're going to run it from WPS. So in the WPS, we do. Uh, we need to link the the correct file to Vtable. You see, I have a Vtable uh, link now. Okay, and then you also need to link all your input data in the same directory as where you're going to run and grip. And for this, um, Wolf give you a libgrib, a link grib um, shell script. Um, so you can just do link grib and you give the pass project Wolf data. January 00v4, F, N, L, and um, be mindful, you, you can't just give the pass, you have to give the first bit of the file um, so that it finds which one you want to, to, to link. Um, the best thing in this case is just to stop that, tapping F, N, and then tab, and then you have the full, full name that you need. Okay, and when you do that, 
it creates links that have called grip file dot a a a a a b a a c um, and if you check in details, you can see that the AAA is the first grip file for the first date, and then the second date is AAB, and so on, so on. So it's in order of dates. Okay. So now we have all the files we need. We just need to update the name is that the PPS. So the tutorial um, makes you update the name list of the PPS at each step. It's just to show you which bits of the name list file I use at each step because they're not all used at each step. Obviously, when you create your own case, you feel free to create your name list of the PPS once and, and go through, but um, yeah. So what you need for Ungrip, you need the dates. Um, just for info, in case it's not clear, uh, you see here there is in start date there is two dates. Uh, the first one is for the first domain, the second one is for the second domain, and so on, if there is more. Uh, because here we have max dom equal one, it would only look at the first value, the second values or more values. It doesn't matter if they are there or not. You can remove them if you want. You can leave them in. It doesn't matter. It won't be used. Um, okay. So the interval in seconds is how often you have your input data. Um, I guess this is six hours hourly. Um, and then you also need, here you have an Angrib um, section. You want to keep the out format as the WPS, and the prefix is how you want to call your files that are going to be uh, named, produced by, uh, w, by Angrib. So you can give it a specific name if you want, in this case for the tutorial is file, but you feel free to change to something more meaningful. Um, so now you can run ungrib. And then it creates lots of stuff. Okay. And, and it's successful when you see that. <laughs> and then it's created. It's it has created those uh, files which are called file and the date. Um, so maybe that's where the prefix come in. There's also a log, which has lots of information. Um, you can find information online on what all this means. Typically, is to tell you which data it found at which level and so on. Um, yeah, Again, I, be, I believe the X means it hasn't found this data. Um, it's a bit hard to read because there's several lines and stuff, but you can do that. Okay. Okay, and um, we'll give you again, a utility that allows you to read this file. These files are not NetEDF, so don't try it with NetEDF. Um, so if we try the utility on whatever. Um, typically gives you a list of, so it gives you a list of variables with the name of the variables. You need the description, the date, uh, the source, it was taken from uh, which level it is in, I don't know, I guess it depends what the initial um, unit was, but yeah, for the levels, how many points there is in uh, longitude and latitude, the projection of the data currently, 
and it gives you the first data value. Um, so you can see how it works. Um, okay. Any questions so far? Okay, so Angrip was just there to reformat the data. It didn't do anything specific to the data. Now we have to put geo geographical data and the meteorological data together on the same grid, on the grid that uh, Wolf will use, at least the horizontal grid. Okay, that's what MedGrid does. Um, okay, because we have already updated namelys, the WPS, it should uh, work. Um, there is a MedGrid uh, section. The FG name is uh, the prefix of all the ungrid file you want to use. So in our case, we only have one, which, which we call file, so we need to call it file here as well. I'm just saying so because for some models like Aero and Jerim, you will have uh, files that have the pressure and files that have the surface fields and they're in different files. So you may have to put uh, two different prefix here. You can put several prefix here and MedGrid will just merge the data together from all the different intermediate files you've and uh, don't change this, the I.O. form, it tells you um, what will be the output format of MedGrid, and two means NetCDF, so just keep it at two because I'm pretty sure you want NetCDF as output. And now let's run medgrid.exe. So this creates a log again, and the met underscore em files, which are this time netcdf files. Okay, so because they are netcdf files, we can just view one with nc view. And you can see maybe that if you recognize there is the same variables as in GOEM, uh, EF, MapFAC, Landmask, and so on. But there are some additional ones like soil temperature, soil height, snow, um, I think snow is, uh, soil moisture, things like that. And in the 3D variables, I forgot which one was the other ones. We have the, like the pressure field, which is new, um, relative humidity field also, and so on. So you see that's a mix of both what was in GOEM and uh, what came from the meteorological data. Um, okay, I don't know if you want to see one field, but Okay, so this is the end of the WPS. You've got the, to the end of it. That's um, that the the metium files are at the end uh, of the WPS. So after you have to go to the wolf section of um, things, and we we'll need to have this. So put it here. Okay. Um, so here's I say Wolf, I haven't changed, I still have Wolf V3, uh, I'll change one day probably to Wolf, but for the moment it's Wolf V3, so um, sorry about that. In the training here, they say entry you're in the Wolf directory, for this case we are going to run in the test EM real directory. I never run in the test slash EM something directory, uh, feel free to do so, I always run in the run directory. Um, so I'm going to write in the run directory, feel free to redo the tutorial from the VM reel if you want. Um, that's exactly the same thing, the data from EM reel is linked to uh, run directory during compilation of the real case, so the, 
the files in one directory are the same as emrel um, and so whichever. So we're going to go to the run directory here. There's already quite a lot of things. These, all these are stuff deleted by Wolf at some point, or some of the, some of the schemes of Wolf. Uh, one thing to note: you see, you have the .exe. These are relative links to um, where the file is. That means if you move your run directory to somewhere else. Uh, you will need to redo it as a link or copy your uh, exif, uh, executables or add this path to the to your path or something. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to link your metm files to your run directory. And I don't like relative pass for links, so I'm going to give it the full pass once I add it again. Yeah. And we want to link them all for this case. Okay. Uh, so after again, you have to edit the name list of uh, far. Most of the things are correct. I would want to run 12 hours from 24th of January 2000 at 12 hours to 25th. So 12 hours, 24, sorry, I'll go here. Start day is 24 January 2012, 12 p.m. And we finish 25 of January 2012 p.m. Um, you're going to tell me this is 24 hours between start day, start hour and end hour. Um, it doesn't matter uh, what you put in the run days, hours, minutes, seconds uh, will take, um, will be used. Uh, so because there's only 12, 12 hours here, it will start from 12 p.m. and start at 25.00. Um, one reason it is this way is because you can have nests that starts after the start of the run and or finish before the end of the run. So you can, uh, it's mainly for nest and not so much for the main um, domain. Interval seconds again, it's six hourly, uh, 180. Input from file is true, 180 for the output. Uh, 1,000 um, times per output, so that would be a lot, or it's not a vista, whatever. So the time step is 180, we want one domain. As I said again, uh, here you see again the east-west number of points and south-north number of points, that the same numbers are in namely the WPS. If you try to run with different numbers, you will be into trouble. And as I said, there is no thing that um, make sure the same, the same numbers are in both files. So uh, you, you're better to try, um, make sure you get the same ones. And the same for the resolution of the grid. It appears here again. Uh, there is one problem in the Tutorial though, it tells you to change num med grid levels to 27, which is fine, but the num med grid sol levels is not good at the start. Um, it should be two, and I believe it's set at four. So, um, how you check this? You do a you do an H on the one of the metm file. Okay, and you have here the num med grid levels is 27, and those two are usually the same as at the num number of sol levels in the med data, and you see it's two here. Um, so. 
make sure to check that uh, before, set, before setting up your uh, nameless.input file. Okay, and then we can, okay. So we're all set, we have the metaM files, we have the nameless.input file. We can run, run, run real.exe. So real can be run um, in parallel for, especially for big runs. Uh, in the run directory, there's a file called run real. It's a bit of an old file, but um, it typically allows you to submit real to the queue and run it in parallel. Um, the other advantage is that it sources the right environment for the code and it puts your stack size to unlimited, so you don't have to remember to do all this. Uh, we're going to run on the on the login node for real, so we're just going to do this. Okay, so what was created? It's created a nameless.output. It can be quite useful for the file. It typically outputs all the values of all possible nameless options, not necessarily just the ones you've set, but this way you can see all the default values and whatever. So if you think something got wrong and you're not sure exactly what was the value for whatever nameless option, you can check this and it will tell you exactly what was run for the for, for your run, what was used for your run. Um, okay, the output and the standard output and error output are in those files, rsl.out.000. Um, you will have one standard output and one standard error file per processor. So if you run with 500 processors, you get 1,000 files. Um, and so, and each file will have the, the number of the processor. So 0, 0 is a rank 0. If you, uh, 0, 500 is a rank 500 uh, node. Okay. Um, the standard output has lots of different information. Um, you can have a look. Um, a lot of it can be a bit obscure, but it kind of tell you whether it's successful or not. Um, okay, and real.exe creates two files, wolf input underscore d01 and wolf bdy underscore d01. These are netly files. Wolf, for some reason, loves not putting the dot .nc to their file, uh, but it doesn't mean they're not NetCDF files. They're still NetCDF files. Uh, so Wolf input is the initial conditions, and Wolf BDR, BDY is the binary conditions. Uh, that means this is a bit of a strange format if you look at it. Um, if I look at this one, Um, let's go to 3D, which one would be, well, let's do MU. So you see you have a lot of MU underscore something. So B stands for boundary, T is for tendency, because it gives you the value at the time plus a tendency to calculate towards the next time. X means it's a boundary um, it's a north-south binary, so it's it's at the uh, east-west ends of your domain. And E means end, so that's the one on the western side of your domain. And it looks like this, you see. So it has a south-north, um, south-north dimension here. So although it's printed like this, it's like that compared to your domain. And it has a boundary, boundary width 
uh, dimension into the dimensions because you only need to put a condition on a very small amount of of cells. You don't need it for the whole um, domain. And so, and you can see that the why we love a west east dimension. Um, so this one is YS, so it's the one at the bottom of your domain, at the south bottom of your domain. Okay. Um, do you want to look at the initial condition? So you're good to look at it on your, on your own if you need. Okay. Okay, so now you're ready to run Wolf. As I said, we need to run Wolf on the queues. Um, so there is a file that's called run MPI. It should be called run Wolf, sorry. Um, I'll change one day, I guess. Um, and actually, I think it doesn't. Yeah. And again, it's just there. Um, it's set up, it's set up for, to run the test case. So it runs on Express. It runs on very low number of CPUs, only four, uh, for a very short amount of time. But uh, you can use it as a base because it shows the right environment. It set up the stack size, and you need to set up the stack size to unlimit it. Otherwise, you'll get the segmentation fault that's well, pretty much guaranteed. And then it, it runs our wolf.exe. In this case, it times the run, but you don't have to adjust. Okay, so let's submit it to the queue and let's wait a little bit for it to finish. Um, it's not very long. Okay, do you have any questions? What's the um, Wolf restart file? Oh, you want to. So it's called Wolf RST. Yeah. Um, let's 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 check. I don't think this one creates one, so I will. Okay. So for the restart to create a restart, you need to set the restart interval, which is in what is it? I forgot. In minutes. Um, so we're running twelve hours. Yeah, it will create one at the end, so it should be fine. We should uh, see one at the end. Um, still, still good. I'll show you at the end. Is? I'll show you at the end of the of the run what it is and how to set up a restart if you need to. Um, oh, okay. It will be easier with an example rather than. It's still queued, so hopefully it will run quickly. Um, it's on Express, so it shouldn't be too long. I'm using the, um, the Wolf um, 4.0.2, I think it is. The terrain following one, I think. So we know which one? So the 4.0.2. Yeah. Um, I think it's terrain following. Is that right? Oh, you mean the the vertical levels? Yes. Yes, it changed recently. I haven't followed uh, all the details. Um, it's if you go to the manual. Wolf model, I believe. Not to be in the Wolf 
Initialization. Um, yeah, it talks to you a bit about setting up the vertical levels. I've never, uh, I've never looked in details about setting up the vertical levels. As I said, I'm just running tests, so I don't really care whether the vertical levels are um, good or not. But yes, there is a hybrid vertical coordinate since V3.9. Yeah. Um, and so, I think there was, um, yes? Sorry. Um, does that tell me what levels it's actually chosen if you leave it as um, allowing yes. what to determine what level it, it wants? Yes, it does. Um, right. I it was, oh, hybrid vertical coordinate is here. I knew there was yeah. more um, information. Uh, yeah, so you see, you can see all the information there. Um, and let's see what the Ah, it's, it's there. So, so you see here, um, we have four RSL dot out from zero to three, and RSL dot error because we run on four processors. Um, also in here, we have the output from the Q sub command um, that gives you the normal. Uh, thing and to check the I didn't create a wolf restart. Isn't? Hmm. Um, sorry, you, to see the, the vertical coordinates, we need to do it in real.exe, I believe. Okay. So if you look at the uh, so that out. Um, so here it says, uh, using new automatic levels program, uh, you get these, which I'm not sure what they are, but um, yeah, they typically give you um, the different levels and what height they are and the thickness of each level. Is that what you were asking for? Yes, thank you. Yeah. And obviously you can also, obviously, yeah, you can also look for it in the wolf input file. Um, so if you look at wolf input, um, 3D vars, there should be, you will have the, uh, yeah, the pressure is difficult to look at. Um, the problem is the pressure is difficult to look at because it's several uh, se uh, several fields fields together normally. So you're supposed to add P and PB. Um, so you won't be able to look at it. Like Give 
you with it. Um, I don't know. I would check the. I would check the information there to see um, what it tells you, how it, um, where the coordinates are saved. Um, yeah. Sorry, I can't give you more details right uh, from the top of my head. No, no, that's great. Thank you. Um, other than that, it didn't create a uh, restart file, sorry. We're going to create one every hour, so it will be uh, faster to get one. Probably out of time to remain it to check. Anyway, the the output is called worth out uh, the domain number and the date of the first output. Um, and you can look at it. Um, and C view tends to worry about things. Uh, but don't worry, it works anyway. The only problem for NCView is that all the longitude and latitude coordinates, as I said, have a time dimension, and NCView doesn't like that. But um, it doesn't crash the code, so um, it can still be used. Um, and so here you have all the outputs. I don't know which one. Um, skin Claire, thank you for this us. meeting. Uh, so this meeting room is booked for some other meeting. So I'll yeah. uh, I'll catch you on the next training. See you. Sure. No way. <laughs> See you. So again, I don't know. So we can see if there was any, if it has started or not. A bit faster. Yeah. So that's a restart file here, or if we start, uh, you see it was created at um, the 21st of January at 13 hour. Um, so if you want to use it, what you do is you change your start time to 13 hour, and you change restart from false to true. So because you don't give the name of the restart file, do not rename your restart files. Uh, it's, it's an automatic name, and that's what Wolf is going to look for. Uh, so it will look for an, uh, exactly that pattern um, in, the, in the file. And then that's pretty much all you have to do here. Yeah, just put through there, and then it restarts. Um, there is a problem that. So we start in the table is given in minutes. And so if you're doing very long simulations, um, a month doesn't have the same number of minutes as the other month. Like, not all months have the same number of minutes. Um, so there is a name list um, option, which I forgot the exact name. We start in table. Okay. There's a name list option that's called override restart timers. You need to set it to false by default. You need to set it to true so that you can change your restarting table uh, from month to month if you need to. Um, if you want always your restarting table to be the same, it's, it's no problem. But if you want to change it, depending on, you know, if you want one at each end of each month, for example, or the start of each month, you, you need to change it. And maybe the last little bit of advice is 
you see the file names have like this column, yeah. uh, which is very, very annoying when using programs like SCP or Async because they think that's an address for a server. Yes, sorry. Uh, the room's okay. book class, thank you. Okay. Right, thank you for your help. Right, bye. Sorry, do it. Bye, Claire. Bye. 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 Bye.